Oh, hello! My name is Mara, and welcome to Books Like Whoa. So, a few weeks ago, I got, um, I dipped my toes into the, you know, Great Salt Lake and had a video called Overhyped Books, which I have to say mostly people were pretty civil about. I was impressed. There's not as much garbage in the comments as, as there definitely could have been. So I appreciate that. Thank you. But people did bring up the point, which I thought was a perfectly fair one, which was, are there books that you think do deserve the hype? So like sort of the opposite of overhyped books, what are books that are just hyped? You know, the classic question from uh, 10 Things I Hate About You. I know you can be overwhelmed and you can be underwhelmed, but can you ever just be whelmed? So you can definitely be overhyped. You can be underhyped. Can you just be hyped? And um, I would say yes. So these are all books that I think do have quite a bit of hype around them, but that at least for me and in my experience, in my personal taste, whatever, just like for me, the amount of hype I heard matches pretty well with the book that I read. I'm also going to do an underhyped book or things that I think deserve more hype. Uh, at some point in the next few weeks, we'll we'll get to that. But for now, we're just going to talk about hyped books that I think deserved the hype. And the way that I did this was I literally just ran through my shelves and started picking things until I had roughly like 15 ish. I may do another one of these videos again if you guys like it uh, and and try to think more about books that I don't necessarily own physically. Enough of my yapping. Let's get into these. I've broken this out into speculative fiction, mystery, and nonfiction. So let's do this. Okay, so starting with speculative fiction, first we have Every Heart a Doorway by Shauna McGuire. Now I will tell you that I think probably the series as a whole is overhyped a little bit in my opinion at this point, but I do think that this original book for me was the perfect amount of hype because it just has tropes I really love. It has the boarding school element. It is an isolated closed circle mystery, guys. Just so you know, um, I do have this on that shelf because though it does have a strong element of fantasy to it, at, at its heart, there is a mystery plot to this, like a murder mystery plot. And I just think that the conceit of this was really special and struck a chord with people. I totally understand why this was so hyped. And in my opinion, it lives up to that. And it's definitely a book that I really recommend. I think it was one of my favorites of fantasy fiction last year. Um, yeah, I still really enjoy this and, and definitely think it deserves the hype. Another short little book from Tor.com is All Systems Red by Martha Wells, Murderbot. Oh, people talked so much about how awesome the character of Murderbot was that I, frankly, I was expecting this to be overhyped when I got to it at last. I, I got this originally as a free ebook, which by the way, if you don't know, if you are subscribed to Tor's newsletters, they give out a free ebook every month. And it's usually like really like pretty well-known titles, aka All Systems Red. That's how I got this one. So pro tip. Um, but anyway, so I had it as a free ebook. I was like, fine, it's short. Like, I'll see what all the fuss is about. And... Murderbot is my heart. I love this so much. I gave this five stars, as, which means for me an all-time favorite. I absolutely adore this character. I think that this is the textbook example of what a novella should look like in terms of its plotting, setting, and characters. This is amazing. It, it may even be underhyped in my opinion. That's how much I love this, but I won't say that because I had heard a lot about how great this series was, So, and specifically this book. So anyway, I think that this totally deserves the hype. I love this. Yeah. Another first and all of all, actually, let's see here. Hmm. All of the speculative fiction ones I'm going to talk about are first books in series. I just noticed that. So another first book in a series, Trail of Lightning by Rebecca Runhorse. And I'm actually, I'm using this to represent this series because I just read last night the second book in this series and absolutely loved it as well. So I think just the series in general deserves the hype that it got. I think that this is breathing a lot of new life into the sort of urban fantasy slash post-apocalyptic genre that has, you know, I think had a real peak maybe sort of in the mid to late aughts and I think hasn't had as many good new entries into that genre as of late. I'm not saying nothing, but like I think it kind of hit a peak in popularity and hasn't um, had a ton of sort of eyes on it in a while. But I think that this book and hopefully this series is reminding people of what that genre can do really well and just how enjoyable these kinds of books really are. Uh, oh God, I just love this in terms of its thematic content. I really love the characters. I love that this is um, spot, this is own voices for, um, well, we would say Navajo, but I'm, I've found through reading this book that the name that 
that nation gives itself is the Diné or Diné. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. So Diné, the, it's spotlighting Diné culture. I've learned so much about the mythology because one of the cool things in like an urban fantasy type series is that if it does have a specific mythology or religion it's based on, you can go like read about it and get ideas about where certain characters might be going in their plot arcs and stuff. So like it's made me kind of fall down the Wikipedia rabbit hole reading about, you know, a culture of an indigenous tribe here in the US that I didn't know a lot about so anyway I just like that's a side note even because like just the books on them their own are just so fun to read they're f dark as fuck and I just love Maggie our main character I love Kai I love Ta I love the good acres like oh I just love them all it's so good I really like this was hyped up as an exciting new series and I think it's totally living up to that hype um, really recommend this. And also the cover designs on these are fantastic. Next, I have another first book in a series, but really I would use this to stand in for the trilogy as a whole, plus the little extra short story in it, which is the Book of the Ancestors series. I started seeing a lot of hype for this. I want to say maybe in the fall of 2018, I saw a lot of people reading Red Sister because I think Grey Sister, I don't know why, but just like maybe kind of mid-year last year, I start, started seeing a lot of hype for this series. And I read Red Sister at the very end of 2018. And then in March and April, I finished the trilogy. And this is the rare trilogy where I would tell you each book is really good. My personal favorite is the second one. But for how much hype this has been getting on booktube, I was honestly kind of trepidatious that I was going to find it to be sort of like basic bitch fantasy, which I think a lot of <laughs> fantasy can fall into that trap of like, it's good, it's fine, but it's not... There's nothing really special about it other than if you just happen to really like a specific subgenre or you happen to connect with certain characters. I think that this is really, really good. It's thematically really interesting. The world is super cool because it's sort of like a fi it's a con it really is speculative fiction because you, there's a way that you could read this purely as science fiction, but it reads like a fantasy novel because it's sort of like post environmental apocalypse and there's magic. Um, the characters are super cool. The premise is that it's a boarding school for assassin nuns, which is awesome. There's almost entirely female characters in this, which is a rarity. And you know, shout, shout out to Mark Lawrence for actually being a dude in fantasy writing awesome female characters. We don't have enough of that. So like, keep fighting the good fight there. Um, yeah, this is just a fantastic trilogy. I have a whole review of this trilogy. I'll try to link that somewhere. But I absolutely love this um, and definitely think it lived up to the hype that was getting built for me on booktube for this series. Then we have Dread Nation by Justina Ireland, which was one of my very favorite uh, kind of fantasy or speculative fiction type picks of last year. And this is one that I think that this is maybe one of the more controversial picks for this because I think that this has been very hyped for sure. I think once it came out, people had more mixed responses to it. Some people really loved it. Some people were more lukewarm on it, but it definitely had a lot of buildup prior to its release and at least for me it completely merited that build-up. I mean first of all I think some of the build-up was purely just from how gorgeous this cover is like what an amazing cover design here and the premise is so cool which is sort of a reimagined alternative history civil war where in the middle of the conflict there was a zombie outbreak so the north and south in America stopped fighting each other and started fighting zombies and there's like these zombie fighter training schools and our heroine is <clears throat> biracial and gets sent to one of these schools. Anyway, it's so good. I think for YA, like I think what sort of my thing that I love most about this is that it thematically is a lot about respectability politics and like how um, groups who are oppressed kind of think about themselves in relation to the narrative that is presented about them from the overgroup. And I just think that it handled that perfectly for a YA audience. I just, ugh, I just really love this. I love the world. And I'm really excited to see where this goes. We don't have any more books yet in the series. I think the next one is scheduled, if I'm remembering rightly, to come out maybe like in January of 2020. Um, so I'm really excited to see where the series goes. But this book in particular did get a lot of buildup. And for me, match that build up, though I know that was not everyone's response. Okay, and then my last pick is Nevermore by, who is it, Jessica Townsend? Yeah, so this is a middle grade uh, fantasy pick. And if you watch this channel, you might be laughing a little bit because you will know that I kind of lost track of this when I moved back in February. And I haven't actually finished this book. <laughs> So I will give you the caveat <laughs> that, that I didn't actually get around to finishing this yet. So 
it may be that in my last like 100 pages or whatever, it totally explodes and is awful. But I wanted to include it because this is incredibly hyped here on booktube. And I was expecting this to not be as good as the hype was. But from what I've read of it so far, so caveat, uh, I think that this is fantastic. And I totally see why it's so hyped because I think it's really well written. Um, I'm not gonna say it's like the craziest new world or like super innovative. But I think it takes sort of worn tropes or like, you know, well loved components of fantasy worlds and puts it together into something that's really, you know, satisfying. And I think maybe not wholly unique, but not just like cookie cutter everything else that you can read in this genre. I think it does a nice job of sort of a new take on on favorite elements. And it's well, you know, it's really well written. It's for middle grade, which is always nice to find some kind of books aimed at younger people that is really well written and, and is really, you know, marketed well. So yeah, I really enjoyed what I read of this. I need to make it I think in July, I'm going to put this back on my TBR. So I just force myself to polish this off. Um, but uh, anyway, I really enjoyed what I read of it. It's very hyped. And in my opinion, really deserves the hype that it has. And I've also heard that the next book, which I also own and will want to get to at some point is also really good. So there you go. Those are my spec speculative fiction-y fantasy sci-fi picks. Okay, so then three picks for mystery. Now the first one is a little bit of a cheat. Um, you will laugh if you watch my channel. Um, this will be very on brand for me. But I wanted to because I, I have been specifically excluding classics or genre classics from these lists because I just feel like classics and genre classics belong in their own kind of hype bubble and people asked me to make a video about that. So at some point I will talk about what I consider to be classics that for me are overhyped, but probably shouldn't be called overhyped because they probably helped form the canon. Anyway, that's like a whole other video. The one thing I just wanted to mention is Agatha Christie <laughs> because I think a lot of people, because she is so hyped, I just want to mention that a lot of people who I've like persuaded to give a Christie a try, even if they don't like love her. I've rarely given these to somebody and had them just like not like them at all. And I think they're very, she's the best selling like fiction author ever. So therefore is the most hyped author ever. And for me, totally lives up to the hype. This is a little bit of a cheat. So we'll move on but wanted to throw that out there. So two non <laughs> non shooting picks. One is uh, one from last year, The Broken Girls by Simone St. James. This was a really big book um, in terms of like when it was first released, it got a lot of press coverage, it was in kind of a lot of the blogs. I saw it a lot here on booktube and on bookstagram. So I think that this definitely got a, a lot of coverage. It was sort of a breakout novel for Simone St. James. And this was I think my favorite mystery of the year last year, this was in my top like three or four picks period last year. I think that this is a fantastic mystery that I would really recommend. It completely lived up to the hype um, for how people had talked about it to me. Um, it's a rare example where I really like the dual timeline that can be sort of a hard sell for me. But I think that this is a great example of a book that does that right. And I think that it's just like really thought provoking in its themes, like it's called the broken girls. And that really is what it is about is what it means to be a broken girl at different kind of points in history in this one little town around this like creepy old boarding school. So anyway, I just think that this totally lived up to the hype. It got a lot of coverage last year and was totally merited in my opinion. And then I just want to say Nora Roberts in general. Um, again, one of the best selling authors of all time. So clearly very hyped and people really love these books. And I think when I first started reading Nora Roberts, I was expecting her to be sort of like trashy, but fun or something. I don't know. I think I was sort of snobby about like what I thought she might be like as an author. But I think she's like a really like she's a master of commercial fiction. She is a master of this kind of suspense novel that she writes these like standalone thriller suspensey type books. They're super good. The JD Robb books she writes are great. Like just really, really good genre fiction writer who um, is super popular for a very clear reason. Like once I think once you've read one of her books, even if you end up like not loving it, I think that you'll understand why people do love them. And yeah, so these were very, very hyped just in terms of like sheer ubiquity of this author to me before I read her totally lived up to it. I have a whole video about suggestions on where to start with Nora Roberts just because she has so many damn books. So if you're looking for my thoughts on that, I will link that somewhere. But yeah, I think that uh, for how much of a bestseller she is, it could be hard to live up to sort of just what her own success 
like the kind of expectations of that. And for me, she 100% does. Okay, and then four nonfiction picks. And I just realized that three of them are basically memoirs. So we'll start with the non-memoir and that is Bad Blood. So I read this earlier this year and absolutely loved it. I had seen it recommended so many times last year from essentially as like, I'm somebody who doesn't normally read nonfiction, but I read this and am obsessed with it. It is so, so good. So I was, you know, I, I assumed it would be good. I assumed that I would like it. But once I started reading it, I totally understood why it was so hyped, both just because I think the subject matter choice here was excellent because like the bonkers, banana pants, crazy things that happen in this book, like, you you're hooked in on that and then the writing is just really a really great example of what narrative nonfiction can do which is take something that really happened and base everything in fact to the extent possible to make it you know reasonably clear when exact conversations are being replicated versus just sort of like here's what was said at a high level like takes all of the kind of nuances of what it takes to write good non-fiction that can handle that label but do it in a way that is narrative that does read like a story that does hook you in and like really keep you turning the pages that is a rare skill set and john carreyrou like i would love to see what his other writing has entailed i haven't done that yet but like i think he handles that really well there's an investigative journalism piece in the story towards the end where he comes in as a character in the book and um yeah i just think that the whole thing i totally understand why this was so hyped because it's really really engaging and i think a very friendly point of entry if you are somebody who doesn't normally like nonfiction but wants to give it a try i would definitely recommend this and i did also listen to this as audio so um, i can recommend that to you as well but yeah this 100% I understand the hype on this and think that it was worth the hype. And then finally, three memoirs, all of which I love um, and I think have a lot of thematic similarities now that I'm looking at them. I don't know that I'll have a ton to say about these because mostly it's just like these were all three of these are super well written, well um, observed. They understand how to have like a point of view on their own lives and the stories that they're telling. I think that all of these select sort of like the anecdotes really effectively um, and p do a good job of sort of like having a specific point of view that make these really compelling. So that's what I would say pretty much about all three. I'll give you a little more color commentary. First being uh, Between the World and Me by ta Coates. This was incredibly hyped when it came out because I think it was really a part of that sort of um, dialogue and discussion we were having maybe in like 2014 and 15 in the wake of things like Trayvon Martin and Eric Garner and all of that stuff happening like that sort of growing sense of like this is a problem we need to do something about it the ubiquity of having iPhone cameras and stuff available to document these things when they were happening that was all going on and I think that this book ended up being a really important part of sort of like bringing some of the I like articulating the ideology behind some of what that stuff was in a way that was really consumable to people, really compelling. This was definitely a book that was hugely talked about at the time and really holds up. I think I did, a, I, I reread not the whole thing, but like sections of it in the last year or two um, and still find it really moving and really um, ideologically challenging because he's coming from specifically uh, a different place than a lot of the sort of tradition of black liberation politics has come from, which I think leads to some interesting tensions. But anyway, I think that this book totally merits the hype. Um, and was an interesting part of a discussion at the time. Uh, similar just in terms of like black civil rights and the history of that are the March trilogy from John Lewis and his uh, partners or his collaborators on the um, graphic novel piece of this. I think as a graphic novel, this works amazingly. And then like, it's hard to find <laughs> a more interesting subject than John Lewis. There's also going to be, I think, a trilogy of these called Run about his time um, becoming a politician and a representative for um, Georgia in the U.S. House of Representatives. Um, so I'm excited about that. But this is an amazing history of John Lewis's time as one of the pivotal figures in the American civil rights movement in the 1950s and 60s. I learned a lot from it. I think it was really moving, really well executed, um, something that has been very hyped and is sort of like one of the those graphic novels that always gets point, pointed to as a great example of what that kind of genre or format can do and something that I think that they've um, pushed a lot into uh, high schools which I think is great so definitely that one's very hyped and then the last memoir 
uh, is my all-time favorite memoir. I happened to read this right around the same time I read Why We Get Fat by Gary Tobbs and those two together uh, as I sort of made like some drastic changes in, in my own eating and, and sort of I had well, content warning but I have a, a history of um, eating disorder and, and whatever and I think that this book along with Why We Get Fat made me feel very seen and was just like literally life-changing and uh, this is my favorite memoir and that is Hunger by Roxane Gay which I've yet to meet someone who didn't at least like it um, if not love it this is very I mean I think any book from Roxane Gay ends up being pretty hype just because I think she's become kind of one of our wise women of intellectual class here in the U.S. She's definitely fun to follow on Twitter if you, if you don't and I just have a tremendous amount of respect for her as a thinker um, as a fiction writer just as a human but specifically this book is about her relationship with her body and with food and how that is related uh, relates to sexual assault that she experienced in the past and I think that this is very sparse direct prose and that is what makes it beautiful I've, I have seen I think usually the critique I see of this book is that some people don't like that writing style which fair enough your mileage may vary but I love it <laughs> and so this was very hyped um, just by virtue of being by Roxane Gay but for me uh, lives up to and actually exceeds that hype absolutely love this one. Those are all books that I think deserved the hype that were just hyped. They were not under or overhyped. Um, they were just hyped. And uh, all books that I would definitely recommend. I like these videos where I get to just talk about things that I really love. Um, I like being salty too, but you know, I think it's good to have a balance. And that's how you guys get to know my tastes and how you can kind of map your taste to mine, I think is by talking about books that I like as well as books that I don't like. So anyway, enough of my yapping. Let me know, uh, maybe in the last couple of years, a book you read that was really hyped that actually lived up to the hype for you. Because I think reading something that you find to be as good as people say it is, is a rare treasure. And uh, so definitely let me know if you've had any experiences of being pleasantly like, okay, that was as good as I was expecting it to be. Um, you can let me know that in the comments. And yeah, like I said, you can also be looking for an underhyped video coming from me uh, sometime soon. So stay tuned for that. But I think that that will do it for now. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all of that information listed in the description box below. And I think that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day and I will just talk to you soon. Bye!